Methane is a gas. It is the primary component of natural gas. The environmental community started out talking about natural gas being a bridge to a low carbon future and being quite positive. What changed is when people started looking hard at the fugitive methane question. On the one hand, using methane instead of coal is a great thing because it emits less carbon dioxide when you burn it than coal. But if at the same time you've got a bunch of that methane getting into the atmosphere and acting as a global warmer, you suddenly lost the benefit, maybe even made it worse. So the question is, at the end of the day, is this a good idea? If there's leaks around casing and cementing and the gas can get up into the air and it's not captured, that's fugitive methane. If the gas leaks out of a pipeline because the seal is leaky, that's fugitive methane. The thing about methane is, is that methane has about half the carbon content of coal. And so people think of it as a lower carbon alternative to coal or to oil. However, if you release methane to the atmosphere without burning it, it's a greenhouse gas problem. Methane is a greenhouse gas many times as powerful as CO2, usually 20 to 25 times as powerful as CO2. Controversy is, are we creating more warming of the atmosphere through the fugitive emissions from methane than we're saving from the reduced CO2 from clean burning natural gas? So there's a big, big concern about how large those fugitive emissions are, and there's a large controversy about the significance of it. And there are some folks in the community that think it's extremely large, and there are other folks in the community and in the gas companies, incidentally, who don't think it's so large. In order to really understand the impact of natural gas, you need to know all the emissions, not just from when it's burned, but from the entire process of natural gas drilling to transportation to end user use. Different people have different models that consider what these emissions are, and people go in with very different assumptions. And without good data, it's very hard to prove or disprove many of those assumptions. There are some reports out recently that show the leak rate could be as high as 9%. And I think there's one government study that goes from 4 to 9%. With that gulf of information, you're seeing the debate get really polarized. You have one side coming out with these reports that say it's worse than coal, we have to switch to renewables right away. And then you have the other side saying, no, 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 we're definitely better than coal. Your report is bogus. And so you have this big, empty, you know, middle part that's not being discussed. As the companies are becoming more aware of public concerns over the ri environmental risks, they're not standing still. They are taking steps to reduce whatever risks are there. I want to applaud the companies for doing that. It's also in their economic interest to do this. Companies don't want fugitive emissions. Any methane that escapes to the atmosphere is, is methane that could have been sold as a product. And additionally, methane is a very flammable gas. Just for safety reasons, you don't want to have any methane emissions during your process. The technology that's necessary to capture these methane emissions, the fugitive methane emissions, is actually quite readily available and is happening throughout the country. I think that the biggest challenge is making sure it's happening all over the place and in a very comprehensive manner. At the same time, we need to develop mechanisms and procedures for monitoring those processes to make sure that actually they're having the effect we want to have. And in fact, there are some very good but very expensive monitoring technologies uh, that are starting to be used to monitor the air in the well pad and in pipelines and other places. So if we could have that technology in place, then this issue goes away. And there are pockets of that happening. EPA has uh, finalized a, a regulation controlling air emissions of natural gas, and that requires companies to install what's called the green completion on in their natural gas processes. What this process is, is it focuses on capturing as much gas for sale as early as possible in the process of finishing a well. This reduces the amount of methane that's emitted or the amount of natural gas that you have to flare.
But that's only half the story, right? Having that control technology in place is really important, and we think it can be really effective. But once it is in place, you need to be assured that that technology and other technologies are being operated and maintained properly. And EPA is now requiring energy companies to submit much better information about their greenhouse gas emissions, including fugitive emissions from the natural gas supply chain. Additionally, there are other studies going on. Environmental Defense Fund is actively working with nation's leading research universities, gathering data on emissions at each point in the value chain in an effort to get some better information so that we can not only better understand how much of this methane are we losing, but also where can we go to fix the problem. It appears to me that we can control the downside and gain the upside, but, but it's something we need to study and we need to make sure we are applying the best practices to ensure we don't swamp our benefit with our, with our fugitive emissions. In the final analysis, I think that the industry, once we learn that information, I think the industry and the regulatory agencies need to work together to write regulations and best practices to make sure that whatever steps need to be taken to limit those fugitive emissions are taken. And I think this could be done in a in, in relatively short time frame, a few years. There needs to be on top of that a continuous monitoring process to make sure that in fact those regulations and steps and best practices are being effective.